Here we are 2019, a year of highs, lows, surprises, legends and wars. Big crashes, heavy impacts, the train places and the funny radio messages. Smooth operator. It taken a year, or try five. We're a long way off. Ferrari are back on top in Italy, Mercedes not so much in Germany. But I guess that six makes up for that. We've had heartbreak, heartache and reflection. All that leading to hard racing and a legend rising again right in front of our eyes. Still we rise as Lewis Hamilton becomes the second only in history in championships. And now to the main event, the episode you've all been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to the third annual 2019 F1 Debate Show Awards. Well, here we go, one more year. We are here for the 2019 awards to honour the season, to say goodbye to what has been a you know a pretty up and down year. But of course, ends the same with the same world champion as last year. But before we get to that. We have a few awards to give out. Now, we both love this award night. We did it first in 2016. We did it again last year in 2018. Yes. And it is really, really fun. So we have eight nomination categories, as well as an honourable mention to give away in this episode today. Hopefully everyone is watching us. You know, we know that it's really big contested around the world and in the Formula One community. We love doing this. We hope you do as well. Um, so without further ado, before without any blabbing on from me let's jump into the first category which is rookie of the year now there is four rookies on the grid so there's only four nominations two of them are british alexander albon obviously sharing his allegiance with um thailand and the uk so you could say two and a half britons um so it's going to be a very hotly contested most of those guys as well coming from formula two almost have to mention as well that antonio Giovinazzi. Even though he has um, appeared in Formula 1 before with Sauber in 2017, he is considered a rookie, of course, for this year. His first season, his first full season in Formula 1 as number two, or as, sorry, as a, as a driver in Formula 1 with Alfa Romeo alongside Kimi. So four nominations, four rookies, and let's get into it. Who is going to become the 2019 F1 Debate Show Rookie of the Year? Alexander Albon. Red Bull, Antonio Giovinazzi, Alfa Romeo, George Russell, Williams, and Lando Norris, McLaren. All those guys have done amazing jobs. And as I say, three of those have come from GP2, or from the two, as it's now called. And the winner of this award is... Lando Norris of McLaren. Incredible drive, Lando. Very well done. The man on the other side, Jordan, we'll get him in a little bit, is well absolutely chuffed. You fully deserved this. So here is your award. <laughs> We now both have the same awards, me and Jordan, to give away. Mine's bigger, as it gets to first place. Um, so, there we go, Lando. Yes. This is coming to you in Woken, <clears throat> or Cheltenham, or wherever you are today. But where you are is not with us, Jordan. So, in lieu of that, of course, he has sent us a message, of course. Oh, Lando, is he not? Um, you know, meme lord, great on social media. So, didn't shy away from sending us a message. <laughs> and he says, the F1 debate show. Uh, thank you very much for this Award. I'll try not to break like I did the car in Belgium. Um, I was hoping to hear this on the radio. Unfortunately, I can't Ooh. watch it live. Uh, but when I listen to it on the radio, I'll try and tune in and not pick up some dodgy in a uh, dodgy radio station like Carlos did in Hungary. <laughs> and hopefully, there's one thing I won't hear on this <laughs> podcast, and that is smooth operator. Oh my um, God. And uh, I sang that out, of course, he didn't have that Oh, end. my God. Um, Lando Norris, incredible for Rookie of the Year. Thank you very much to wow. everyone. Thank you to Andrea Seidel, Carlos Sainz, everyone who's believed in me in McLaren, Zach Brown, everyone at the factory in Walken, and, of course, you guys, which is me and Jordan. Um, Lando, thank you very much for that message. He also adds, at the end, keep up the good work. 
Thank you very much, Lando. We will. He also adds one more thing at the bottom. My career is very much like your show. It moves up and down, side to side. <laughs> We're there. It's next page. <laughs> like a roller coaster. So thank you very much for that, Lando. Um, absolutely incredible. Um, so Jordan, I mean, Lando Norris, you know, great drive from him this year. Um, you know, I mean, obviously your yeah. team as well. Something that is you know, desperately, desperately needed, you know, a change up with McLaren. But as we said in other episodes, he is just an incredible guy, meme lord, really great on social media, really fun, energetic guy. Him and Carlos have changed the Formula 1 paddock for the better. And, yeah. uh, and yes, he fully deserves this award, doesn't he? Oh, absolutely. You know, he um, comes into Formula 1, like I said, a breath of fresh air. He really, really was such a nice guy and such a quick driver. Should have got some more points, consistency. Of course, the car let him down on some occasions, but nevertheless, he's had a very, very solid first year in Formula 1. Can't wait to see what he can do for the future. So, thank you very much, Lando. Thank, uh, thank you very much for accepting the award. And, of course, commiserations to our other three rookies. Of course, he won't be able to win it at any given point. But, nevertheless, thank you for being a part of it. And, uh, of course, I doubt we will be, I doubt, don't think we'll be doing this award so next year because there's only going to be one rookie. Yes, so, well done, I just want to say as well, congratulations to Nicholas Latifi for, for winning the 2020 Rookie of the Year. So, let's, let's just throw yeah. that one in there straight away. <laughs> um, so, the next award is the Boss Award. Not sponsored by Boss, by the way. I must add, other frequencies are available, of course. Uh, this is uh, handed out to the best team principal of 2019. Those that made the correct decisions, those that were on point, sharp, and, of course, those who, of course, came into the sport for the first time this season and, you know, made a name for themselves in one way or another. These guys, well, the book stops with... With these, with these boys, and of course, we it's mostly down to the drivers and stuff, the engineers who build the cars. But really, we need to give the, some team, the, these team principals, some recognition. Of course, the FIA don't have an actual category for team boss of the year. But nevertheless, here's your nominations for for the boss award. Franz Tost Toro Rosso. Total Wolf Mercedes Christian Horner Red Bull Racing Otmar Safnau Racing Point Andrea Seidel McLaren So some good names in there, some very, very strong names. Some you recognise, some you're probably quite surprised that we're actually in there. But the award, uh, the Boss Award 2019 will be going to... Andreas Seidel of McLaren. Well, congratulations to Andreas for picking up this award. Two out of two awards have gone to McLaren, which just proves how strong of a season they have had. 2018 was such a poor year. 2019 was... Absolutely tremendous, wasn't it? Andreas, you didn't even have a full season of, in, a, in McLaren. Came in, still steadied the ship, carried on that momentum coming into the European season. And of course, can't wait to see what he can hold for the future. He's got some really exciting plans. So does McLaren, so does the drivers. So let's see if he can deliver. And of course, unfortunately, Andreas can't be with us right now. He's probably doing something much more important or much better than, than you know, sitting here with us collecting some awards and of course here is your award I must say um, but he did leave us a kind message he says thank you very much boys for uh, making me the boss award again not sponsored by boss fragrances other fragrances are available of course uh, it's been a tremendous year my first season at McLaren my first bit of a season you, you could say Andreas uh, can't wait for the future I have a really good team around me can't wait to see what the future holds and of course keep up the good work thank you very much and we certainly will Lyle Andrea Seidel, McLaren. It's been a solid year, hasn't it? You know, I don't think no, anyone no, can really dis I mean, disagree um, with that, can't they? Great. I mean, I love Zach Brown. Obviously, the ex-team principal now. He, I think he's a director or something in the team now. He was a great guy. But it's it's not just Andreas. I mean, of yeah. course it is, but it's also the, the, the team that he has with him. And I don't just mean the two drivers. I mean, every single person at McLaren. You know, McLaren are this really revamped team. It's like, if you knew McLaren in 2017 or whatever. No, 2018, sorry. If you knew McLaren in 2018 or, you mm -hmm. know, even like even the last <laughs> few years with Fernando Alonso and, and, and even Jensen Button, it was so serious and, and low. Everyone was, you know, 
like arms folded, gritted teeth. We're not doing very good. Honda were in. It was it was gloomy, wasn't it? It was gloomy over the skies yeah. of Wogan. And now it's, I mean, really, it's, mm. it's a breath of fresh air. And literally, because everything's changed. I mean, Zach Brown started the year. Obviously, he's still in the team. I love that guy. He is so good. Um, you know, the two drivers at the have for Carlson and Lando, the team has changed so much. And, you know, even though there's, I mean, the UK weather still probably is gloomy over walking, it's just, it's so much, it's just revamped the team. I love it. And also, I mean, I've said before, you know, when, when Carlos got that second place, sorry, third place in Brazil, they found out during, or we found out anyway, the Formula 1 fans, we found out when Will Buxton was doing his paddock pass and they just found all the McLaren mechanics and they were celebrating, they were partying like British kind of people when we're watching the World Cup. It's insane, it really was, and I, and I love that team. It's so good. I didn't know too much about Andreas Seidel when he came in. I still don't, but I just know that he's, he's leading McLaren in the right direction, in a great direction, and yeah, can't wait for what he can do next year. Two for two for McLaren, and they fully... Deserve it's not being by yeah it's not being I mean Jordan's not being come biased, on boys but I mean because I'm a Red Bull fan I don't care about it's, I don't care about McLaren it's not rigged but, it's yeah, not rigged I promise them and obviously thank you very much for saying <laughs> good work so the next award is a returning favorite we love this award we hope you guys do as well it's called the Maldonado Award we do. the 2019 Maldonado um now this is kind of the equivalent in the movie industry as a raspberry. It goes to the team or the driver who does something insanely stupid um, and just rememberable, but just stupid. Nothing, just nothing exciting. Very much so, like obviously yeah. the man himself that it's named after. Obviously, past Malnado of Venezuela, incredible guy. This award is very special. We've done it three years in a row. And here are the nominations. And if you make this nomination list, it's very, very special. Even though, of course, you probably want to get driver of the year. Um, but here are the nominations. Yes. For the Maldonado Award 2019. Sebastian Vettel spinning in Bahrain. Daniel Ricciardo reversing in Azerbaijan. Same corner, same lap retirements, Renault, Bahrain. Grosjean's pit lane crash. Silverstone Ferrari Collision Brazil Valtteri's Qualifying Crash Mexico To make this list of course Jordan is kind of special but you probably want to get higher up than and not on this list but we yeah. have to say that the winner of this award, and um, frame it as you will, even though you might not want it, of course, is the man who did the very funny mistake. <laughs> we remember it all season long. Happened around the halfway point of the season. So the winner of the Maldonado Award is... <laughs> Roman Grosjean's pit lane crash in Silverstone FP1. Incredible, Roman. Well done. <laughs> now, here is your award. Yes. Uh, now, Jordan, um, of course, you, I mean, we saw this moment almost, we, we could have almost seen it, because obviously as Village looks over the pit lane, you know, coming out of the pit lane, um, I mean, what a, more, so firstly, the reason why I think yeah. Rojan got this award, we gave him this award, is there's a meme that went round, Pass Manado was the only guy to ever get a penalty for speeding in the pit lane, <laughs> while serving a penalty for speeding in the pit lane. Pit lane drama, of course, carries over to his <laughs> ex teammate at Lotus, Roman Grosjean. I mean, how do you crash in the pit lane? I mean, he wasn't even on his outlap. That's a thing. And, I mean, what do the team mechanics do? Or what did they do? <sighs> did they push him back into the pit lane? Go, Roman, don't lose your front wing. And, hey, I just. I mean, insane. Pasta would. I think Pasta would actually be laughing at that. Pasta probably isn't that. Isn't, wouldn't do something like that. I mean, um. What a what, yeah, Pastor never did that. Pastor never did he that. Sped in the pit lane, but he never crashed into the pit lane. And it's not even the tightest oh, one, obviously. I would say probably the tightest pit lane is what I mean. You know, I guess not Baku, like Austria, maybe Brazil, not Silverstone. Silverstone is not a tight pit lane. Or not even uh, Singapore is probably even more t isn't even more probably trickier than than Silverstone. It's stupid, Roman. But anyways, nevertheless, mm. you get a uh, award. And spoiler alert: this is the only award that Roman is gonna get. But he does leave us a message for that. He says, Aww. "Merci bien for the pasta Ma for the Maldonado award." I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I had something in my eye. He said, 
Hmm. I think that's more of an excuse. Don't know about that. No one's confirmed that. He said that the tyres had no grip, the tyres yeah. were cold, and it was Kevin Magnussen before. messing on with my car. Probably, but uh, it was FP1, Roman. I mean, <laughs> it was maybe in the race would you know. It was FP1, start of the day, so, you know, that was it. Um, he said, there's not much to say about that. I am definitely hoping we'll that 2020 is a better year. Roll on 2020, and at the end he says... Keep up the good work, which is probably quite hard for Roman to say because I mean he probably doesn't want this award, Jordan. But uh, nevertheless, Roman Grosjean. So of course we no. saw this moment. I mean, tell every what, what what did you? I mean, you said to me before we started. What did you say? What did you think when you saw this moment happen? Obviously, we were at Silverstone. If you didn't know, guys, we obviously we saw this moment with our own eyes. What were you thinking, yeah. Jordan? Well, first of all, straight away I went. That's a Maldonado Award nominee. Right there, we've just witnessed the future. Well, I've seen into the future, just there, like seriously. And even then, <laughs> I was sitting there going, he, I, "In fact, I think he actually won it here because I can't think of anything more sillier, if, if that's even a word, like anything more stupid or anything." Like I don't, I don't like probably grilling a grudge on or anything like that. But spinning in the pit lane, I know it's, I know it can be done, all right, and, and other things have happened like that. But spinning, really, like. I don't, I, I don't get it, mate. I really don't get it. it, it nevertheless, it, it is funny. But then again, I suppose if me and, La, if me and Lyle were at the controls of a yes. Formula 1 car, I'm pretty sure we'd be doing a lot of spinning I would just by getting out the garage. Sure. So, you know, we can't talk or anything. But, hey, we're not professionals. R- Roman Grosjean. <laughs> oh, my God. Roman Grosjean. I love him. Anyways, moving swiftly on to our next award, which is the Prediction League Award. Now, if you're not aware of this, we ran a prediction league for the second half of the season between the Belgian Grand Prix and, of course, the last race in Abu Dhabi. I did say it was a bit of a trial run to see how it would work because I didn't want to say, okay, we're going to bring this this thing and we're going to hype it up and it didn't get any hype or nobody really cared. But a lot of people got involved and it got a bit competitive uh, when uh, whenever we would post on Twitter the results in the standings. I would get some people saying, oh, I'm this, you know, this far away from you, that far away from you, and I quite liked how people were getting very competitive. Um, so yeah, I really like that, and of course, like I said, we are bringing it, bringing it back for 2020. But you've got to wait until a couple of weeks, or even at some point in January, when we announce the new rules in stuff. Can't wait to obviously to show you guys uh, what's going on, or what's going to be new in 2020. But overall, there was only one winner. <laughs> Lyle, you were very close, must admit. You nearly won the title, but it wasn't you, unfortunately. I mean, you, you threw it away in the, in the last round. Ricardo on the podium. And as, Come on. And as Ricardo would say, Jordan, sometimes I know you have to be spontaneous, but and come on. And I don't know, he, he, he could have. <laughs> but then again, then again, if, if, you, if, you, if you had said, like, I don't know, Gasly or even Sainz on the podium in Brazil, I probably would have given you the, the award there and then. Scrap the, scrap the league. There you go, Lyle. You've won it there. And <laughs> if I'm totally honest with you, but nevertheless, of course, our winner was Chazer HD. Of course, fellow YouTuber. We've collabor- collaborated with him a few times before. Such a nice lad. He knows his stuff. He really does know his stuff. And I can't. Obviously, he was absolutely honoured to get this award. And here is your trophy, sponsored by Rich. En- oh God, I'm not. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say he, he didn't say that. Of course, rich energy. You know, just just pays in advance. You know, don't don't tell anybody else because you know that's hush money. Uh, Chazza, here's your award. No, not at all. Uh, of course, you're not gonna re- you know you're not really gonna get this. This is actually my trophy. You're not gonna touch it. It's mine. Uh, but yeah, there you go. There's your award. Well, actually, um, um, Lyle, did he have any words to say? Message, real life Chazza. So you know, actually Chazza this time. Actually Chazza. And he, yeah, really. Did he? Um, and he no. said, um, really? I mean, he's proper chuffed to get this, of course. Um, we've worked with Chazza before as well. Obviously, I, a really great guy. Also, as well, just quickly, last week, last week, uh, over on F1 Fanatics, which is a, a, like kind of a channel that we've worked with before, we did um, four channels. We all did a quiz, obviously, which included ourselves and Chazza here today. So go and check that out after this, of course. So the real life Chazza did send us a message, Jordan, saying uh, thank you for this award and setting up the prediction league in the first place, uh, as it has been a lot of fun. Also, as well, obviously, again, guys. Jordan, the man on the other side, is the one who did set up this prediction league. I was working away over the summer, and he sent his like, "Oh, I'm gonna do this prediction league." Put out the video, and you know, it's it's done really well. So again, congratulations to uh, Jordan for all of that. Uh, I mean, he's he's, he's mm. you know he is worth something to us. <laughs> and then he also says, so Chaz says, um, I would also like to thank Ferrari's unexpected incompetence 
allowing me to get my predictions correct on so many occasions. <laughs> but importantly, most importantly, I would like to thank the thing that helped me the most, my brain. <laughs> I like that. Uh, then at the end, he says, grazie ragazzi, grazie tutti. That's a good cool one. Um, so, yes, thank you very much for those messages, Chaz, grazie. Obviously, um, wish you all the best for 2020 in your channel. Hopefully, we can work together very soon. But yes, real life message from Chaz. Um, yeah, I've, I know. I can't believe that. Can't believe that. I mean, and also as well, also as well, go and check out yeah. Chaz's channel because we did say that the winner would get a bit of a shout out. So, of course, link will be in, in the description below. I'm assuming you probably would have checked him out, his channel already. But if you haven't, strangely enough, then of course, links will be in the description below to go and obviously go and subscribe to him, go and follow his content for 2020. But yeah. moving on now, just a bit off topic in a way and of course this year marks of course a sixth world championship for British driver Lewis Hamilton Hamilton we haven't really mentioned a lot this year well since he's won his championship have we not lied we've barely spoken about our, our fellow countrymen and I mean to be fair six world six world titles it's it's truly incredible only one guy has ever achieved that um, <clears throat> excuse me and of course Lewis Hamilton gunning for that record next year going to be matching for seven I mean, we are witness, witnessing um, history right in front of our right in front of our very eyes, and it's it's. I think it's absolutely incredible. Um, and of course, being honoured that he's from our country, fellow fellow Brit, he started off his career with very little money. You could say he, he he always says that he got he, he got in F one, so he got in the in the car and like the 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 old school way, not like he didn't have loads of money to throw at. His dad was working two or three different types of jobs every day remortgaged the house I think it was twice or three, or three times to go and fund his racing and Hamilton just got better and better and better and before you know it he's in Formula 1 alright had a tur turbulent time in McLaren start off 07 and 08 strongly won his championship in 08 brilliant and of course everyone started doubting Hamilton in his, in his late McLaren days because they were like is Hamilton ever going to win more championships going to Mercedes shock horror very very surprising but of course, what, is it, what he has achieved at Mercedes is just beyond incredible. Nobody expected that Hamilton would dominate this much. And, and I've grown to like Hamilton. I remember being one of those kind of noobs that didn't like Hamilton because he was winning all the time. But I've, I've certainly learned to, learned to grow. With, of course, Hamilton got beaten into the sport. But I do like Hamilton now. I respect him massively. He's a brilliant driver. Of course he is. Six world titles. It's an absolute... It, it is truly an honourable thing to, to be witnessing. But... For Hamilton as well, it's just incredible, absolutely incredible. Lyle Hamilton, six world titles, rec you know, eight wins or seven wins away from Schumacher's ninety-one wins of an all-time F1 record, only one title away from matching the all-time record. He's broken loads of Schumacher's records. He could beat Schumacher's podiums, all-time podiums next year. Uh, I think Schumacher's on one five five and Hamilton's on one fifty podiums. Smashed his pole position record by twenty. Incredible, isn't it? I mean, what a driver we are seeing right in front, right in front of our very yeah, eyes. Exactly. I mean, Hamilton is just he he's dominated Formula One, and and you know we've said it before that like, you know when you're an athlete at the top, you know you're always going to get hit, you're always going to get people that you know don't agree with you, like other things. But at the end of the day, Lewis Hamilton. I mean, we do like Lewis. You know, he's a, he's a Brit. You can't dislike anything yeah. that's 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 British. Not at all. Obviously, we have our teams, and no. obviously your teams. You know, British, but. Like, but my team's still British, you know, but it's Austrian and, you know, we can, you, we can support other people, but it's Lewis and I think he is so good. He's such a great ambassador for, for Britain. He really, really is. Again, obviously, as John said, you know, he has paved the way for stories like his dad was working two jobs. He got hired by Ron Dennis when he was 13 in the McLaren programme, but mm -hmm. he had to fight or his dad had to fight all the way to get there. He hasn't just been someone who's bought his way in. Um, I thought that's really mm -hmm. good. He's, he's really, he is, to be honest, he is humble at the end of the day. I know he has a lot of money and he's ambassador and he flies around with Tommy Hilfiger and that, but he is very humble. He's humble to his roots, and or at least he was at the start of his career, and he still is. You know, he's got a lot of, he's got a lot of support you can show off. So he's a great guy to have in Britain to represent us. He's been nominated for Sports Personality of the Year, you know, God knows how many times. He obviously was nominated uh, mm -hmm. last Sunday, uh, which obviously was Sports Personality 2019. Ben Stokes got at the critical play for winning the World Cup, which actually happened on the same day that Lewis Hamilton won the British Grand Prix. So, a bit of a start attack. Amazing. Um, I remember, actually, Jordan, we were asleep in the greenhouse that was that bus back to Milton Keynes oh, when was, all the cheering came through, which was, yeah, obviously them winning against New Zealand, um, which was obviously really good. Um, but anyway, Lewis Hamilton, amazing guy to have. And as Jordan said, you know, we have 
develop this kind of love for Lewis. I mean, Jordan was a fan, of, again, of McLaren when Lewis was younger, stayed with the team, not the mm-hmm. driver. To me, Singapore 2018 was obviously a race that I went to, and that's where Lewis did his incredibly amazing pole position lap, smashed all the records, and what he said was an out-of-body experience. And that's where I got this kind of more of a respect for Lewis, that he can do things in the car that nobody else can't. Uh, sorry, nobody else can. Max can't. Yeah. Seb can't. Nobody can. Probably even, I mean, Michael could, but I think Michael, if Michael was driving right now, I think he would find it hard to even drive against Lewis. He's an incredible guy. He really, really is. I have him as a British ambassador. Is I would have loved to see Hamilton and Schumacher fighting both in yeah. Mercedes' teammates for, that, for a championship. That would be... It would, Unreal it would have been see. absolutely incredible. He's such a humble guy as well. You know, I mean, whatever you think about him, he is so great. He said in, in USA when he won the World Championship, still we rise, still I rise. I think it was still we rise. I think that sounds better. Still we as a team. And of course, he does mean the team. Toto Wolf, I mean, amazing team boss. He was almost second place to Andrea Seidel, who, Seidel, who obviously won the Boss Award a few rounds ago. But uh, Toto, incredible. Some of the team, Pete Bonington, I mean, amazing. Valtteri, uh, James, whoever the hell James is. I think, it, is it James Valves? James Valves, is that right? Something like that? James? James, James yeah. Valves, yeah. He's James, but you only know him as James. Uh, incredible work. Absolutely <laughs> insane. And yeah, I mean, just wow, so special. They had an amazing car this year. I think it's been voted Car of the Year or something like that. And I think it was, yeah, the FIA Awards, Car of the Year, Lewis Hamilton definitely deserves these championships. Also, Mercedes, six in a row for them. In saying if they get seven in a row, as well as Lewis becomes the most successful, Mercedes become the most successful in consecutive world championships. And again, they enter into this league of more successful teams, and they are in with Ferrari, Mercedes, and no, are Mercedes, <laughs> Ferrari, uh, Williams, McLaren, and these teams have been going for 50, 60 years. And even though Mercedes were around in the early 50s, they've really only been going since 2010. So, absolutely incredible. Everyone there deserves a pat on the back but especially Lewis Hamilton. Um, now, just changing the dynamic a little bit, of course. Uh, 2019 was a great year for Formula 1. And, of course, obviously Formula 2 and Formula 3 getting more publicity and obviously seeing drivers come from those ranks. Um, but this year was marked by, obviously, a few sad events. Um, as, obviously, you will know, we had some people from Formula 1 and the motorsport community obviously leaving us, sadly passing away this year. Um, it started with Charlie Whiten, who was the FIA um, race director and official, who basically was the man who pressed the button for the five lights to go out. He passed away in March, the day before the uh, Australian Grand Prix free, fra- free practice was going to start, which means he actually was there on the Thursday. Shocked the Formula One community, and we had lost a great guy. Uh, then Nicky Lauda, the non-executive chairman of Mercedes and, of course, three-time world champion, obviously with uh, Ferrari McLaren, battling James Hunt till the very end, obviously, to become Austria's most successful world champion. Also worked with Mercedes to get Lewis Hamilton onto the team. He passed away before Monaco, which, for the Monaco Grand Prix, was one of the best tributes we ever saw. Red Halo by Mercedes, the Red Caps by the drivers, Lewis Hamilton winning, which I've said to Jordan, is one of the only races I've ever wanted Mercedes to actually win. And they did that in honour of Nicky. And of course, in Belgium, the very sad events which led to Formula 2 driver Antoine Hubert sadly passing away after a crash in that weekend. Um, For those three drivers, we would like to, of course, dedicate this award show to them. Formula 1 in 2019 and uh, Motorsport in 2019 will never uh, forget those three three people. See, an amazing talent in Antoine Hubert. We have a tribute video obviously coming out very soon on this channel. Amazing driver in Antoine Hubert, Renault junior driver, possibly could get there in the future. Nicky, of course, his work with Mercedes, and as yeah. I was just saying there, with about Lewis, you know, he, he helped Lewis get there. He was the anchor. And, of course, Charlie White, and the, the, the judge, jury, and executioner of Formula One, the man who heard everyone's complaints, but would shug him off and would, would press the five lights and start what is our favourite sport and event, which obviously is the race day. Uh, those, three driver, those three guys will never be forgotten. And obviously, from the F1 debate show, we would like to dedicate this episode and, of course, our deepest condolences and obviously say that you'll never be forgotten this year. Um, Jordan, um, obviously, very, very upset in this this news and what we had this year. Obviously, Charlie Whiten was doing the track walks on the Thursday. Uh, Obviously, Antoine and, of course, Nicky Lauda. Um, Very sad occasion, very sad drivers. But as I said, with on Nicky's part, the Monaco Grand Prix, one of the best tributes for 
himself. Um, any any words on on what obviously yeah. the people that we've lost this year? Yeah, I mean, you know, we had a really good twenty nineteen in terms of racing and stuff, but of course it it probably was one of the darkest and probably the saddest time as well in Formula One because you know Charlie White was such a lovable, likable character in F one. He'd been around for about forty forty five years in the world of Formula One. Um, you know, and it, it, he was recognised by everyone. He was he always had time as well for to speak to people, and that's what I like about people who are high up in like sport in terms. Like I, I could always refer to Sir Bobby Robson, who of course was a, a, a ma you know a massive figure in the world of in the world of football. Again, he had time for everyone, and I, I see that in in Charlie White. I have seen that in Charlie White, and um, you know, like I said, he was just a very likable character. He, he, well respected and um, you know everybody of course was so so sad to hear the news that he passed passed away I think it was on the Friday morning I believe um, and I remember just seeing a picture of him and him and Sebastian Vettel on the Thursday when they were doing the track walk and it's just weird to think that you know he, it, one day he's there the next minute he's gone it was it was sad and you know and Nicky Lauder as well again he was a, a very colourful character in the F1 paddock you know of course on a, you know his red Red cap, he he was he stood out from everybody else. He was always there in the presence of, of Mercedes. He was there, you know, in the days of McLaren when they were with Mercedes. And then, of course, transferred over. Uh, I think it was twenty thirteen. I think when he made the full transition with Total Wolf. Uh, and since then, he he worked hard, gave his advice, worked with the team to get them to where they are today. And certainly, dedicate uh, Mercedes will dedicate a lot of their wins and championships to Nicky Lauda. He would have loved seeing Mercedes winning another. Drivers and Constructors Championship, and of course the Red Halo at Monaco, the little red star as well that they had, and they've kept on since um, since that race. I think they've got Danka Nicky as well on the nose cone. I think that's still on there, and I'm hoping that that remains and the red star remains for the for however long Mercedes are in F1 because he was such a big, big figure. Even though he never raced for the team or anything like that, he was still a variable, you know, very you know noticeable character, and a lot of people do refer that. Well, certainly, the younger generation referred to him as being part of Mercedes, and of course, I you know I think it's just a lovely, lovely tribute, lovely, lovely guy as well. And like I said, just he just said it, he just said things how they were, and that's why I like in people as well. Uh, and yeah, and Antoine Hubert, you know, such a promising figure in the world of motorsport, Formula Two. He, he won two races that year in Monaco and in France. Uh, of course, Monaco his first win on the Sunday, and then taking his taking his second win as well on the Sunday in France. His home race, Renault Junior driver, certainly would have been a Formula One at some point in the future, you know. Like, and again, he was very likable as well. You know, he was very, and of course, he was reigning GP three champion. That the last year it was going to be called GP three before being moved to F three, as it was called, you know, in twenty nineteen. And, and and yeah, you know, he he will be sadly missed. I know a lot of people are still affected by his his sudden death, and you know, it was just a, such a, a freak accident that. Like it's just one of the things where like it could have been like if I, if it happened, it, you know, a couple of millimeters down, a couple of, couple of millimeters up. If this hadn't happened, that hadn't happened. It was just the, a sudden chain of events that occurred that led to his death, unfortunately. And it was just yeah, it's just absolutely horrific to, to even to even you know to see it and hear about it, you know. And of course, our thoughts will always be with Antoine and his family at this time. But of course, those three guys will be heavily heavily missed in the world of Formula One here at the F1 debate show and and on behalf of the F1 community, our thoughts will always be with you. So, moving on and continuing on with our award show, and of course our next award is Race of the Year. Now, we've had some brilliant races in 2019. The first eight races, the first nine races, you could say were a bit, mm, a bit mm, boring, the bar was was pretty good. Every, everyone else was, was pretty boring. Let's not talk about the French Grand Prix because it was pants. Once That's the one that's going to win, guys. Just <laughs> it, yeah, but it doesn't. The only one that was is not nominated, that's probably the only race that was boring, wasn't it, Jordan? Just quickly, that's probably this, France, would you say France was probably the only race that was boring? Well, I, th I, can, I, can name, I can name a few, but oh, the French Grand Prix was just like horrific. <laughs> It was so bad. It was just yeah. Anyways, I'm I'm even boring myself talking talking about it. Um, but no. But aside from that, we have we have we have had some unbelievable races, and some people are go are as far going as far as saying race of the decade. And one of the races that that is down here, I've even labelled 
as race of the decade. A lot of people were a bit funny with that at first, but I think they're starting to agree with it now. Or well, some people are anyway. Some people, are, of course, aren't. But here are your here are your nominations for race of the year. Oh, The Italian Grand Prix. The Austrian Grand Prix. The Brazilian Grand Prix. The British Grand Prix. The German Grand Prix. And the Singapore Grand Prix. So we've had some tremendous races from those countries that represented the Grand Prix this year. Some ones that we will live on forever. Even if they don't win, certainly we will we will remember them for years to come. But they could all be one winner, and that winner is the German Grand Prix. Oh my word, what a tremendous yes. Grand Prix. I absolutely loved that Grand Prix. There was just carnage left, right and centre. Both Mercedes crashing, of course Hamilton got away with it. A pit, a, a pit stop blunder from Mercedes, celebrating, um, what were they celebrating again? I can't remember. Or the, uh, oh, oh. I think it was, was it 125 oh years? Oh my God, this is embarrassing. I can't, I can't remember. remember. Oh, so I had a special, had a, had a special what, 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 what were they celebrating again? 100 Grand Prix? 125 years in I can't France remember. Sports. Oh my that god, this is embarrassing. I really can't remember. But anyways. I feel like John, I feel like it was 100. <laughs> oh I can't remember. But I know that they had like special. Yeah, they had obviously like special livery that were celebrating. Stuff, yeah. I think it was like, might have been like the, uh, the 200th Grand Prix, I think. I'm not, I'm not too sure. It was uh, It was something like, it was, it was a big landmark know. anyway. I think for, it was 100, the, 125 years. L let us know in the comment section. Below yeah, because, yeah, we, we, literally can't, we literally can't remember. But yeah, anyway, the German Grand Prix, it was just, like I said, it was just carnage. You know, cars going off as well. Huttenberg could have got a podium as well. We could have seen Lance Stroll on the podium again. Daniel Kvyat was on the podium. A guy that was in red... Oh, sorry, he wasn't, even, he wasn't even in F1 in 2018. Came back into the sport and was on the podium straight away alongside race winner Max Verstappen. And, of course, those two had a bit of a, an exchange back in the day, didn't they? Uh, of, course, one, of course, both swapping uh, drives with each other. But, no, German Grand Prix was absolutely... Incredible! I'm pretty sure you guys will agree. Will agree as well. Of course, Austrian Grand Prix was another favourite of mine. I loved that race. Verstappen chasing down, uh, Verstappen chasing down Leclerc. Who, of course, was on pole position. Verstappen got a dodgy start that race, just closed him down in his kind of home Grand Prix at the time. Of course, the, the you know Max, Max Mania going to Austria in, into the hills. It was just incredible. Sea of orange all over. Yeah, it was lovely. But no, Germany Grand, of course, German Grand Prix wins it. And of course, they send us a little message as well. Oh, go on, go on Germany. Germany. Yes. Rain. Go on, they say, thank you so much for this award. And of course, we'll try and make it rain every year at the Hockenheim. But of course, we're not on the calendar next year. Very sad face, crying face, sad face, crying face, sad face, crying face, sad face. Anyway, uh, a massive lot, lot, just sad, yeah, sad faces. Of course, Germany won't be on the calendar next year. Oh, I, I'm sad that it's not that, that it, it's it's that not on sad. anymore. But yeah. I hope that it does come back in the future. And of course, that we do race in Germany once again. But it says no. We had a brilliant we had a brilliant race, absolutely a, a tremendous start. We can bow out, go out on on F one on an absolute high. Thank you very much for all, all congratulations. Sorry to Max Verstappen to winning the race. Uh, instead, we're just going to spend our Christmas eating lots of sausages, drinking loads of beer, and of course watching a lot of the F one debate show. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. And underneath he says, or oh, they say, sorry. Keep up the good work. And of course, we've got to keep up the good work. I mean, is is, is, everyone, is everybody saying that? Is everyone saying keep up the good work? But anyways, we will do that. Anyways, I mean Lyle, German Grand Prix. Come on, it was a ah. Uh, for me, there was no, there was no other, there was no other race apart. You could say Silverstone. Silverstone was a good race. We were there, but in terms of just drama and everything else, it was just Germany was. No one, no one was going to beat Germany, were there? Well, the thing is, I mean, well, actually, firstly, John, just present the award because you didn't. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, award. Germany. I didn't, yes, I didn't give you a trophy, oh, so John. One, yeah. Um, yeah, so of course um, Germany, absolutely incredible. It's the rainy races that always make it special. You know, Canada twenty. I mean, Canada twenty eleven is the race oh. of the decade. That's most likely going yeah. to be on there. That's why I was like Jordan. You can't forget that one. But that being said, though, Canada twenty eleven is a rained out race, and and the rain just seems to add more spice mm -hmm. 
it was incredible. And I think the, the thing that we look for in, in this kind of thing, we look for hard racing, we look for good racing. Yeah. You know, we don't, I'm not one of them people to say that when we have an amazing race, for example, like um, Silverstone 2019, or, you know, just another race where we've had good, solid racing, it doesn't have to be one where everyone retires. It doesn't have to be where there's loads of crashes. Like, for example, uh, again, Spa 2012, a lot of people saying that because there was that massive crash at the start, which, which uh, 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 went with, obviously, the, the, the recipient of the 2019 Pass Malnado Award getting a race ban in mm-hmm. Italy. It doesn't have to be like that. It can just be a race of good, uh, like, hard, firm mm-hmm. battles. Yeah. But the thing with Germany, so again, Jordan just said that, is there was drivers like Charles Leclerc, Valerie Bottas, you know, who couldn't, put up with these you know they're skilled drivers and they were making errors Nico Hulkenberg who was chasing a podium and actually was in a really good chance to get one he went slid, He went sliding into like that part of sector 3 where the drag strip mm-hmm. is Charles Leclerc did as well and even he said he was banging the steam and he was saying come on Charles like you yeah. know better come on Charles um, Lewis Hamilton nearly had a spin off there almost collected the wall I think he did on his re- front wing but obviously he didn't, have to, he didn't retire Valerie Bottas again catching the curb and I know you might say it's wet and obviously aquaplane that was a massive puddle at the, obviously at the, at the spike of, of turn one but again you know a very skilled driver you know six wins or whatever that he's got Mercedes driver obviously been in form one so he, he shouldn't do things like that he was catching drivers out and that's why we love also as well of course Sebastian Vettel back of the grid in his home race redemption for what happened in 2018 of course me and John were both on the edge of our seats waiting for what would happen because we made a video I think before Germany saying can Sebastian bounce back from Mm -hmm. this blow in 2018 and he did obviously pit lane to the podium Danny Kvyat again incredible and I don't care what you guys say out there all the haters Toro Rosso had two amazing podiums that they deserved this year Pierre Gasly and Danny Kvyat both deserved these podiums they weren't flukes also, as John said, Lance Stroll could have got on the podium, but again, not as a flu, as a solid, strong driver. Drivers who deserved to be there because they were fast and they kept the car on the track. Everyone span in that race, even Max Verstappen, Lewis, Valtteri, Leclerc, Hulkenberg, Ricardo. All these drivers span out, a few of them crashed, but these didn't. Fiat exactly. didn't. And that's why I think, I've forgotten who got driver of the day, I mean, most likely Verstappen, so, yeah. but Fiat, incredible drive from him. And, of course, Sebastian Vettel. Redemption, back of the grid. And, obviously, of course, redemption over what happened in that race in 2018. Um, yeah, couldn't... You know, I was so happy for Sebastian and that race. Didn't watch it live. Watched, watched the highlights, and it was absolutely incredible. I wouldn't even say it was a race to compete. Brazil, quite close again. Obviously, yeah. you know, what happened, especially on the podium, is incredible. Obviously, first McLaren podium in over 2,000 days. Second podium for Toro Rosso. Two Hondas on the podium. Absolutely incredible. Anyways, let's move on to the next award, which is Overtake of the Year. Now, this is a good one. We have some fantastic overtakes in here, and actually most of them are by the same guy. Ooh. So, yeah, you'll have to wait and see who that is. Um, great venues as well. It just makes much better racing. And actually, one of them, we, me and Jordan actually saw. And how really? close, you might say, might surprise you. Anyways, let's get into the nominations for the 2019 F1 Debate Show Overtake of the Year. Charles Leclerc on Carlos Sainz, Monaco. Charles Leclerc on Roman Grosjean, Monaco. Lewis Hamilton on Valtteri Bottas, Silverstone. Charles Leclerc on Pierre Gasly, Silverstone. Double Red Bull Overtake, Brazil. And Carlos Sainz on Sergio Perez, Brazil. Do you see which one it was then that we saw? Very close, wasn't it? It was right in front of our very eyes. And... Yes, there might be a little bit of bias in this, guys, but the winner of the Overtake of the Year award is... Charles Leclerc on Pierre Gasly in Silverstone, but more importantly, at Village. Yes. Jordan, which was the grandstand that we were in, it was right in front of our eyes. We can say that because we saw this. I mean, we saw these two amazing drivers, Gasly at Red Bull at that point as well, mm. going at it tooth and nail into the loop through entry onto the Wellington Street. It was absolutely incredible. Charles Leclerc was on a charge that day, and I think we 
kind of pondered giving him driver of the day. Mm-hmm. I think I'd give it to Gasly on, on the, obviously when we were walking on the track afterwards, but I think we pondered at Charles Leclerc. Incredible drive from him, and of course Charles Leclerc, here is your reward for that. Pierre Gasly, your reward is getting overtaken. Hopefully you might get a back to Red Bull one day. We said it, we said it in Red Bull, but it's now got to Toro Rosso, so... That's right, awkward. yes, that Sorry. is right. Uh, but Charles Leclerc will find it one day. Um, anyways, so Charles Leclerc, of course, sends a message. He cannot be here. He says, thank you very much. Grazie ragazzi for this award. Um, also, I mean, you know, guys, you would have seen Charles Leclerc was on most of those. I mean, two in, two in his home race in Monaco. Absolutely incredible. And, of course, this one here in Silverstone. I don't know why we always call it Silverstone and never Britain. It's one of those things. I think it, it is, you know, yeah, like, yeah. You call it by a country... Like, Monza for Italy, maybe a little bit, but it's always Silverstone. It's never Britain. It's always Silverstone. I love that about that. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you very much for this award, F1 Debate Show. I absolutely love your content. Thank you for recognising me as a strong driver. I hope that 2020 is much better. Uh, I love the faith you guys have in me. I love my team in red. I'm going for the team lead next year, and hopefully a world championship is in my sights. Um, it was a great overtake. I was even had time to look up at your Union Jack, which said F1 debate show. <laughs> That's an Easter egg, guys. So go and find out where we said that and where we revealed our Union Jack on. Do you remember that, Joyce? Yes. Um, so, um, yeah, thank you very much, Charles Leclerc. And, of course, at the end, he says, mercy and keep up the good work. So thank you very much, Charles. Thank you, Charles. That will be coming to you in the post. Jordan, absolutely incredible. We saw it with our very own eyes. Uh, Charles Leclerc was on a charge that day. And Pierre Gazzi was also on a charge. FP1 and obviously fourth place in that race. This, obviously, this, the sole Red Bull fighting at the top. Obviously, after Verstappen collided with Vettel or Vettel collided with Verstappen, should I say. Yeah. Um, absolutely incredible, wasn't it? A great race and a great overtake. And again, were you thinking overtake of the year once you saw it obviously two for two in that weekend obviously with Grosjean and Maldonado well there were certainly a few I seen one when we were at Village as well um, that could have been overtake of the year I got this one because I remember I don't know if I got it on camera I got a few overtakes on camera and I don't know if that was one of them or that was the Verstappen because I know those had a really good battle but of course the, the Gazi one I thought the Gazi one was just going around the outside as well and like you know cutting inside it was just it was just brilliant and yeah I remember it Um uh, I don't know if I, look, like I said, I'm not, too, I'm not too, not too sure if I got it on camera, but I'll be having a look. I'll be having a look to make sure if I did or not. But and of course, like these awards, well, don't take them too seriously because, and of course, like the more personal towards us as well. And with us seeing that 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 overtake, it was uh, well, what was a good overtake. We're, we're not we're not, we're not going to say it, it was just that, oh, it was an overtake. We seen it. We were there. You know, it was actually a good overtake. Let's not forget. And we were there. We were in front of it, and it was a good race overall. So yeah, I think. We, I think it's fair that we gave it as well to, to Charles. Of course, one that is dominating some of these uh, some of these nominations, which just proves how good of a season Charles actually had, in our opinion as well. So yes, congratulations, Charles. Let's hope that you can win more in 2020. So next up, next award is Team of the Year. Now this is going out to the best team that we think performed better than anybody else, in our opinion anyway, in 2019. Some teams have exceeded expectations. Some teams... No, name and none in particular, Ferrari, have, you know, just performed a bit below the belt. Uh, and Renault, and maybe us. Uh, I'm, but I'm naming, I'm na- you know, we can't name none, you know, no individuals whatsoever here on the FDB. We are very, very professional. Williams as well. Um, so, yeah, anyways, so here are the nominations for uh, for Team of the Year. Mercedes. Ferrari, Red Bull, McLaren, Renault, Toro Rosso, Full of teams. I think I think all the teams that we nominated probably did good. I think everyone else that we did nominate did bad. So we kind of gave, yeah. So really, it was just some of the good teams that we thought. But no, anyways. Uh, like I said, don't take don't don't take them seriously. Uh, but anyways, our team of the year. Who 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 will it be? Well, 
it is McLaren. Shock horror, right? I know. McLaren have won our team of the year. Get in there. Again, three not biased. McLaren. Three. 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 Not biased. Like, like, is that, that like Pep Guardiola thing? We go three, three, like that. We go three. Um, that's some, some weird like that. Jose Mourinho as well. Three, three, three Premier League. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> three. Uh, like suddenly three relegations. Anyway, uh, moving on. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not going down this route. I think three relegations might be two. Anyway, I I'm not too sure. Oh, anyway. Man. I have to throw that in, don't you? You haven't even mentioned football all year. No, I haven't. What no. a digger. What is it? <laughs> anyway. I'll give you that one, John. That was good. That was, I like that. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, apart from Southern fans. Apologies to Southern fans. Anyway, so... Yeah, McLaren win once again. Uh, of course, McLaren team can't be with us today. And you know what I mean? I, I did send the invites out. I'd set, we sent them out, didn't we, Lyle? First class. Well, we sent them. We we, we sent them three times. So three times, one exactly. So like, one we, we need to have a word with our postal team. We really, really do. I mean, shocking. Someone's getting sacked over Christmas. Really, really yeah, are. Individual postal. Oh my. Team. <laughs> Every every bit of postal services, yeah, <laughs> just like F one P F one P S. You're sponsored by Yodel, uh, and of course other curries are are available. Uh, but UPS, <laughs> exactly like Ferrari. Oh, there's a UPS dog. A van in my. Oh, what was this? Oh man, you, there was a U. Do you, do you remember? Do you remember that? That's Sebastian Vettel. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I've got to go. There's a UPS truck outside. Like the, the least yes, advert <laughs> advert thing ever. Like, come on, like Sebastian, put a bit more effort in you act in your into your acting. Yeah, after what, like, 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 what we do. Yes. Like, what we do it's, it's funny yes. anyways <laughs> McLaren couldn't be with us today because our postal service team are useless uh, but they sent us a message and they said thanks so much for awarding the team of the year to us you know it's been a very strong year in 2019 like we've already said can't wait for 2020 hopefully to go on to bigger and better things good future ahead for the team as well hopefully going forward we can fight again once again for world championships and hopefully race wins and in brackets it says well I think you know by now it says Jordan is better than Lyle. Oh, thank you, McLaren. Oh, oh I was not expecting that. Come on, McLaren. Oh, dear. <laughs> no, it says keep up the good work, and of course. Obviously. As, al as always, we will. I mean, you know, Lyle, McLaren, fourth place in the Constructors uh, this season. The best finish in a long, long time. It's been a solid, solid year for them after going through some hard, hard times for the team, performance-wise, and of course, off-track as well. It's, it's just nice to see McLaren doing well once again. It's not where they want to be, but it's a really good start, isn't it, from, from, from where they were, you know, a couple of years ago with Honda. I think I said a lot of this when I did Andrea Seidel. Um, yeah, just, I mean, McLaren are a new team, absolutely new. It's like they've, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, they've changed so much over the year. New year, new me, and definitely, definitely new McLaren. It's absolutely incredible. I love it. New drivers, new, I mean, oh, it's been so good. It really, really has been great for them. Great stepping board. Uh, most successful season since I think it was 2014 I think yeah, it was yeah. 2014 one of those two really really strong in terms of points I mean it's over I think it's over four times what they got la uh, last season and in 2017 alone the team dynamics changed as well obviously again with the kind of the, the more frowning Fernando Alonso no offence in the team to now obviously two very happy chippy go lucky guys which obviously Carlos and Lando it's been absolutely amazing and again guys they have just shown Lando is, is rookie of the year I mean, he's been amazing no matter what team he was with. But even if there was 50 drivers... No, there couldn't be 50 drivers. Even if there was 19 rookie of the... If, even if there was 19 other rookies on the, t on, on, the, on the board, Lando would have got it. And again, if Lando was with another team, he might have not even got it. I think it's also Carlos. That's, you know how they always say, your other half brings it out of you. So, you know, yeah. your, your other half matters. It's Carlos Sainz. Lando's other, other half is Carlos. And he's definitely brought it out of him. Also, Andreas... Also Zach and of course also McLaren, the guys at the at, at the races, but of course obviously the massive team at Walking. So absolutely incredible, definitely, definitely deserves it. Yeah, I've absolutely love McLaren this year, and another team that just needs to get up there because again, no offense to Williams, but of course you know on the other side of the garage, the only other pure British team, Williams, unfortunately are not there. So we definitely need a British team on the board. Obviously, of course, a lot of them are Red Bull, Mercedes. But obviously, there's only two, which are pure British, which is McLaren and Williams. Time now to move on to the final award. It's in two parts, because this one, we have our driver of the day, the F1 debate shows. And we also have a fan's Ooh. choice. Now, if you've been following us on Twitter, obviously, please do. If you haven't, the link will be in the description. Also, for that, obviously, for all the information about the Prediction League, which did a few episodes ago, a few rounds ago, sorry. 
Um, if you've been followers on Twitter, you'll have seen a survey that came out, which had basically had a number of drivers on, some serious, a few funny ones to vote for, and this was under the category of Fans Choice Driver of the Year. Now, we've absolutely loved that. We've had around 40 people responding, so thank you very much for everyone who has voted. It was free <laughs> to talk about a second of your time, but yeah, we appreciate that so much. Um, we've loved the voting, of course. It's been open for about a week. Obviously, closed a week ago today. Um, and yeah, it's been absolutely amazing. So you guys have all come together, told us who you've liked this year, and obviously making sure that it's not just our opinion that gets out there, it's also your guys. Because obviously for everyone that watches us, see mainly a lot of you will be from Twitter. We want to show our appreciation and obviously show that your opinions do matter. Also, we've been running obviously a lot more polls on there in terms of race and things like that. So obviously we love all of the feedback. Um, so without further ado, um, let's get into the first part of the Drive of the Year Award which of course is the Fans' Choice Award. Carlos Sainz, McLaren. Max Verstappen, Red Bull. Charles Leclerc, Ferrari. Valtteri Bottas, Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton, Mercedes. Pierre Gasly, Toro Rosso. Now it was great for everyone to show who they liked this year. We might have had a few funny ones on, but I think everyone but one person got a vote, so that was pretty good. Anyway, so the Fans' Choice Driver of the Day Award is... Tied with 13 votes each, and that is Spanish driver Carlos Sainz and Monegas driver Charles wow. Leclerc. So, guys, you will have to be. So, one of you lives in Madrid, one of you lives in Monaco. You're gonna have to share this award. I'll tell you somehow. what, you send, so you send hope you Charles, Charles that one, I'll send um, Sainz this one. How about that? Yes. Exactly, we'll do that. So yes, both of you will be getting an award, so obviously well done for that. Um, so um, we have got messages from both of them. So I will start with uh, Charles Leclerc, shall I? Firstly as well, I'm, gl I'm really glad Charles Leclerc got it. A lovely and amazing year from him. Great wins, you know, Belgium, back to back, Italy, incredible. And his pole positions as well. Beat Hamilton is now the most successful pole sitter of 2019 he won in bar sorry he got a pole position in bahrain he became the young the second youngest pole sitter the youngest in ferrari history the youngest with his teammate and that's when we all thought ferrari were back we even said that in the season review and of course jordan that did not go that way and um, but yeah amazing result by charles leclerc also of course we all know what happened in belgium the the, the maturity of that guy obviously Winning that race, also winning in front of the Tifosi. I mean, honestly, Charles has yes. had an incredible season, and I agree with you completely, guys, for voting for him. So, Charles Leclerc says, Mercy, again. Um, I don't know, I sent the invite to him twice. I don't know why he hasn't come. Come on, Charles. Come on, Put Charles. yourself together. Um, I, I, as you said, in the words of Charles Leclerc from Baku, I am stupid. I am stupid. Come on, Charles, why didn't you yep. come? You are stupid. Or in the words of you in Germany... Come on, Charles. Come on. Yes, come on, Charles. So anyway, he, Charles Leclerc says, Merci again. Um, thank you very much for giving me your finest choice drive of the year. It's been an amazing season with the Tifosi. Loved every single minute of it. Uh, miss my friend. Uh, of course, we do too, Charles. Um, great to win in front of the Tifosi. Uh, Bahrain annoys me, but still good to get a first pole. Um, and uh, not much to say other than I've had some great competition, great season, and roll on 2020. He's even wished us, John, Ooh. a Merry Christmas. Which I think is Thank lovely. You. Thank you very Everyone much. Else has. Um, and of course, at the end of at the end of his note, he says, "Keep up the good racing, <laughs> Norm Jordan. Work." Uh, and Carlos Sainz says, "Gracias." Of course. Um, great battling. I have loved Lando, love Carlos. He is Carlos. I don't know why he said that. <laughs> Must be his kind of jokes. Um, loved everyone in McLaren. Oh, I love your tea. I love your channel. I watch. It's my second most viewed thing on YouTube. The first one is the original song that goes. Oh no! Smooth operator. Check the radio live. I think um, we picked up another dodgy music channel much. again. 
<laughs> um, so thank you very much, Carlos, for that. Um, and of course, at the end of it, he says, "Keep up the good work." No change to that. Thank you very much, Carlos, and thank you very much, Shaw. Great season by them. Now, me and Jordan, we had our feet. We we yeah. were tied as well. Charles Leclerc did an incredible season. Really, really strong. Absolutely loved that. But there was one man we had to give it to. And here are the nominations for our 2019 F1 debate show Driver of the Year. Carlos Sainz, McLaren. Max Verstappen, Red Bull. Charles Leclerc, Ferrari. Valtteri Bottas, Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton, Mercedes. Pierre Gasly, Toro Rosso. Here we go, guys. This is the big one. This is the one that they all want to win. The FIE prize given. What the hell is that? This is, what this is it. it. They, they want this. They need this. And the winner is... <laughs> Carlos Sainz. Oh, yes! Of McLaren. Yes, I mean... Oh. Yes. So there we go, McLaren. There yes. we go, McLaren. Four for four. But yes. Oh my God. I mean, Jordan, you must be ecstatic right now. But we'll get you in a little bit. McLaren have been the team of like. I mean, what? How they have done this all? Their two drivers have both got awards. Their team principal has got award. They, they obviously Carlos got an award from the fans as well. And from us, he has got driver of the year completely on his own. What a stellar season. He might not have had the results. He might not have been, you know, up there all the time. He has that podium in Brazil, which of course he got out of he got at the end. He didn't obviously get to stand there up there live, but he did go up there with the team. But the one thing that comes to me mind with Carlos is consistency. I don't just mean consistency in the car, even though amazing result. I think Baku for me, I don't know why, but Baku stands out is when I both saw Carlos and Lando, I just thought McLaren, that's them. I can't believe that they're actually here. From what he's done, from how he's bounced back from see, being with Toro Rosso and, and loaned out to Renault in that kind of, where's Carlos's career going to go yeah. kind of way? He went to McLaren, new start, unbelievably young teammate in obviously 19-year-old Lando Norris in a new environment that is see, a Spaniard who he wanted to be compared to, but he still wanted to write his own book, Fernando Alonso had been to. Because remember, you know, just because he's from the same country, you don't have to be like him. Yeah. Carlos Sainz had all that crap from Netflix. Oh, you're the next Fernando Alonso. I'm like, no, he's not. He's gonna be. In, he's gonna be the next Carlos Sainz. He's not. Gonna I, be don't like, I don't like. I don't like that when people say you're gonna be the next no. Lewis Hamilton. It's like, no, he's not. Sure, I'm not gonna be not. the next. I'm not gonna be the next Jordan, and Jordan's not gonna be the next me. So I don't want to be the next get, you. No, <laughs> don't say. Don't say that. He's gonna be the next Carlos Sainz, and that's why he went to McLaren. He's just been so strong. He's been great out, out, out of the car as well with relationship with Lando from the way that he handles the media from the team to honestly everything has been amazing about this guy. Never give up. Some great overtakes. Great driving. We've loved what we've seen. Obviously representing the British team really, really well and of course getting the podium after obviously um, Kev Magnussen 2014, Carlos Sainz 2019. 2,072 days passed and Carlos finally breaks that barrier. Amazing, obviously, a very strong result. I think it was 95 points. He got 96, sorry, in the World Championship yeah. standards. Obviously, brought the battle to sixth place till the very end against ex-Red Bull and current Toro Rosso driver Pierre Gasly. There's not enough space, I think, on this episode to say how good Carlos has been to us. And, of course, just last thing, Jordan, he has been at a midfield team. I think that's the main thing. Yeah. Car uh, Charles Leclerc, you know, has done incredible, but he's been in a Ferrari Mm -hmm. uh, Carlos Sainz has been in a McLaren a team that isn't even midfield last year if we were going off last year's points and even 2017's car we would say they were like towards the back of the grid when I think mm -hmm. of McLaren I always think of Fernando Alonso conking out in Sochi 2017 when he just climbs out on the formation lap that's yeah. what comes to mind that's what remind. that's what McLaren is to me and what Carlos has done is completely ripped up that image put it in the bin and gone right this is how it's going to go. 
this is the two new drivers, this is the future of McLaren, and here is what we are right now, which is a second place, which is a third place, I don't know I keep saying second, sorry, a third place in Brazil, a fourth place in the constructors, and a damn good career ahead of them. Both drivers and, of course, the whole team. Jordan, you are a McLaren fan through and through. Yeah. I mean, the change of dynamics has been incredible. Uh, we spoke about these for the fourth time in this episode. Yeah, we have. Carlos Sainz fully deserves this award. I mean, how yeah. great has it been for, 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 for the Spaniards in your team this year? It's been an absolutely tremendous season for McLaren. I can't give them enough praise as it is, you know. Coming into the season, I don't know what I was expecting. I don't think nobody really did apart from McLaren themselves, I suppose. The car looked okay in testing. I don't think it was anything special. Um, I mean, Norris in Q3 in Australia, brilliant. Sainz, the first ret- the first retirement of 2019 was Carlos Sainz. Not a good thing to get off get off the mark with. I think, I think he also did he retire in Bahrain as well. He got off to a really poor start. And I don't think he scored points till I think it was Azerbaijan or Spain around the mark. Yeah. And then once he scored points, he just, you know, the results kept coming and coming and coming. And then the last two rounds... Um, before the summer break, he got fifth places, which was incredible. And then, you know, into the, into the after the summer break, the results kept coming. And then, of course, they finally paid off with that third place in Brazil. It, I mean, it was it was honestly tremendous. And finishing in P six, best of the rest. He's in that top six bracket. Anyway, all right, Albon could have caught him. Could have caught him. Gasly were in, that, were in that Red Bull. He beat two guys that were in a top car. And of course, all right, Gasly wasn't performing well, and Albon had a lot of a lot a lot of ground to gain, but he still beat two guys that were in a Red Bull, which is impressive in itself. In like you say, Lyle, a midfield car, which it is, you know. And I'm, I'm I can't give enough praise to I can't give enough praise to McLaren. I know that it's it's might have been in this episode, uh, with Dom, we've just gave loads of awards to McLaren, but I think they deserve it. I know a couple of shout outs as well, like you know Charles Leclerc definitely deserves a mention because he's had a strong strong season first year at Ferrari most pole positions out of anybody seven this year uh, two uh, in, in the season sorry two wi- uh, two race wins Belgium and Italy Italy being the biggest one of all I mean to win to win you know your first race at Italy for Ferrari you win it incredible uh, Lewis Hamilton deserves a mention as well so does Valtteri Bottas strong season from both those guys of course Bottas is best season overall second place Hamilton sixth world championship what more can you say uh, Max Verstappen strong year from him three wins two pole positions could say three hung, uh, for, for Mexico let's not dwell into that one just yet um, Sergio Perez he's had a really really good year top 10 finish once again in the racing point Daniel Ricciardo could have been more So he, but however he still finished in the top 10 in the Renault good drive from him Robert Kubica he had a poor year of course he had a poor year being at the back all the time but of course, he got back in the Formula One from near enough impossible, yeah. from you know driving an F1 car ever again. He managed to make it back. Incredible as well. And of course, George Russell, uh, a lot of future. You know, he has a lot. You know, big big future a- ahead of him. So a lot of a lot of you know drivers to mention there. But Carlos Sainz for me, top the bill just a little bit. I know he didn't win a championship or anything like that. But when you look at the bigger picture, what what kind of car he had, he drove a superb season. He had an absolutely tremendous season. I can't gave McLaren and Carl Sainz enough credit. I'm pretty sure, obviously I know you agree, Lyle, but I'm pretty sure that you'll agree with some of the drivers that I mentioned yeah. uh, when I you know, when I said, oh, these guys deserve, uh, deserve do deserve a shout-out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, Jordan. Um, Valtteri Bottas started the season. You know, how about that? I mean, how about that? <laughs> yeah, how about the that? Ch- I don't know why I don't know why we have to look at that, but, you know, everyone's comparing. Yes, it is six-time world champion to a man who, I think he had three wins at that point before Australia for this season. He brought a fight to the man, finished 100-odd points behind him in second, firm in second place, beating out people like Max Stappen, Charles Leclerc, Sebastian Vettel, who again, you know, we have to look and we have to think, oh, God, and again, Jordan, you didn't say his name. I wasn't expecting you to. I'm not going to say his name. But why not? You know, I mean, like, Max Davin, he's the anchor of Red Bull. You know, Charles Leclerc, the man who's come in and, and kind of, you know, humiliated you in a way. And that's only fair to say. He got wins before you. He got pole positions before you. He's got more wins than you. Obviously, he's got way more pole positions than you. I think Seb, I mean, Seb's got, what, one? Maybe, I can't even, got two, one pole position? Two, two. pole positions. Of, you know, it's it's oh, Sebastian. It, we're not here to talk about Sebastian, but nevertheless, no. John, the drives that you've said, incredible. Max Verstappen, I mean, really, really good. There's all this talk about is he going to win the world championship next year? He's definitely build building to someone who is that 
I think now he's becoming a Sebastian Vettel in Red Bull. He's becoming. He's got so much trust in the team that they're willing to put everything into Max. A bit like what they did with Sebastian in you know 2011, 2012. By 2000, and I'd say even by the end of 2011, Seb had gained the trust. He had Red Bull at his disposal, mm. um, and that's what I think now. Max has he has Red Bull. To basically, if if Max stays jump, Red Bull will say how high, and I'm very excited to see what they will do next year. Of course, my boy, my team, Red Bull, really excited to see what they will do. And of course, will Max stay after this? For after after this season, will he stay in 21? Of course, 21 being the year everyone's going to move. Um, now, of course, that is all of the awards. Thank you very much for everyone who's voted in our Fans Choice Award. Everyone who's interacted with us, of course, our nominations have been affected by what you guys have all said what you guys have all loved about us things like that um now if you have seen any uh shows out there of course sports person or anything like that you will know by now they will always say something cheesy at the end so our cheesy thing of course is to reflect on our year and say thank you um and shout give some mentions out now of course this year has been our best year on youtube we've gained over 900 subscribers um Incredible, Jordan. Yeah. Absolutely insane. Yeah. We've had some great guests, which started with Alex Zafro. I mean, a, an amazing guy to have on. He came on our episode, the first one in 2019, where we gave our predictions, where we gave our Alexander Albon 20th predictions. <laughs> He's also going to be we on our channel it. tomorrow, Christmas Day, for yes. our final episode of YouTube is Decoded, uh, which obviously is now the penultimate episode of 2019. So kind of starting the uh, starting the year as we finish it. Um, so great guy as well. Also as well, Aldas. We met him in Silverstone. F1 Fanatics, Razan F1, Chaz HD. There's so many channels that have been on us, have been on our channels. We've been on theirs. We've helped, we've interacted with, and we couldn't do it without those. Of course, we couldn't do it without you guys watching, where, wherever you're joining us from right now in the world, whatever platform you found us on, whether it be Facebook or Twitter or even Instagram or just on general YouTube, even if you've subscribed, even if you haven't, we just hope you enjoy this content. Of course, if you are new, please subscribe to our channel for more. We have massive plans for 2020. We are a growing channel. If you will know, if you know our tagline on Twitter, it is, we are two guys that like watching cars go around in circles. Nothing special. We're just two lads from the Northeast. We've been friends and we just decide, let's put our conversations on YouTube and see who wants to hear them. That's really what the channel is, of course, if you are new. If you've stuck with us through this year, thank you very much for your support. Um, I mean, it's been an incredible year, Jordan. I've loved every yeah. single minute of it. I've loved all the planning. I've loved everything from the race reviews to the previews to the debate shows to the one-off videos to the vlog that we made at Silverstone. It's been yeah. a roller coaster. The way to describe this year, it's been up. We've been moving up. We've been no. moving down. We've been moving side to side. To side. Like, like a, a roller, roller coaster. coaster. That's the way. To, <laughs> that's the way to describe this year, Jordan. I mean. This has been insane this year. You know, I yeah, know that you will be so ecstatic about it. I know you are. You I know, am. it's been absolutely... I mean, what's the kind of words that you can describe this show? How has this channel come about? It's been a whirlwind, hasn't it? It has. It, it really, really has. And, you know, like, 2019 was a year that I, I, I never thought it would have been this, this, this good. Like, we've got, like, people interacting more or less every single week on YouTube or, or Twitter or, or, or whatever. We've met a lot of brilliant people whether that's fellow youtubers or just your average joes on twitter or whatever like getting it you know interacting with the shows uh you know like lyle like, like we said as well obviously she gave shout outs as well i just want to give a quick shout out to likes of johnny who who came on the show as well in june uh, and late break and the guys late break and who came on just after their charles clerk took his win in italy as well collaborating with, with those guys and of course our f1 youtubers decoded as well that's i love that series love interviewing for other youtubers as well Dan from F1 Reviews, absolutely love interviewing him. Aldas, like I said, met him at Silverstone, did an interview with him, did that quiz with him on F1 Fanatics' channel, yeah. uh, and then of course he gave us a shout out that got us over the 1000 barrier, which yeah. is, again, I can't thank him enough for that. F1 Fanatics as well, uh, really, really good friends with, with you know with them, always communicating off off of YouTube as well, uh, and obviously go and subscribe to them if you, ha if you haven't already. Two or three really, really good lads who just, again, who are like us, who just love 
Formula One, share, want to share that passion as well. And of course, we are fans of them in themselves. Really, really enjoy what they do. Can't wait for their plans. And of course, I hope you guys are very excited, very excited to hear our plans for 2020. Of course, we've got two more videos coming up uh, to, to see out the year. Of course, we've got the F1 uh, YouTube's Decoded Finale Christmas Special with Alex Afro tomorrow. And then of course, on New Year's Eve, we have F1, uh, well, just reviewing uh, well, F1 decade, you could say. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to name it, but we're basically just, we're going to reflect on the the decade of Formula One between 2010 and 2019, picking out picking out our best moments, our worst moments, um, our moments we should forget about, and just like probably just talk about the F1 debate show as a whole again and or whatever. But yeah, we're just going to have a sit down, have a good old chat. Can't wait for that. But no, Lyle, it's been an absolutely incredible year. It really, really has, and I'm so so excited to see what 2020 could bring us. We have some great plans, guys. But please we stick do. around with us. We are learning. We are just here for the for the light. And we're just here for the fun. We're we, here for the fun. Honestly, we, 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 ab we absolutely love this, what we do. Yeah. We absolutely love it. We're like, like what Al said, like we're nothing different off on and off camera. We are the exact same people. If you met us in the street or whatever, like in the conversation me and Lyle have on here yeah, is the same what we would have, whether that's about F1 or something completely different, football or whatever, or, yeah. or going... We got you know reminiscing about old school times. It's like us sitting at a table at Weatherspoons just having a good natter, good chat. Yeah, def yeah definitely. It, it's amazing. Definitely. Um, I love your little natter. <laughs> you <laughs> and also, Weatherspoons is a, is is a pub. If you, if you want to know that. Um, yes, uh, we have some massive plans. Thank you very much for sticking with us. If you have all the way through the year, uh, we can't do can't thank you enough. Um, thank you very much for watching this episode as well. We hope you have enjoyed. Obviously, please leave in the comment section below your results. I mean, do you like do you like the the, the winners of these awards? <laughs> Who would you choose? Please keep it civil. Um, you know, race of the year. Do you agree? Is it Germany? If we've got some more contenders, driver of the day, blah blah blah. What do you think, Maldonado Award? Who do you think should have got it? Um, and of course, just yeah, just thank you very much for watching this episode. Uh, the last thing to say is, of course, have a very merry Christmas tomorrow. Uh, please catch us for our last episode uh, sorry for our last um, episode of us two obviously which is race of the decade as John said tomorrow yeah. Alex Afro it's YouTube's decoded as well obviously please keep on track with that we've got some we've had some great YouTubers plans for series two have already been filed if you like um, and thank you very much for watching this have a very merry Christmas tomorrow and until next episode guys we'll see you later see you later guys have a merry Christmas enjoy it <laughs>